with 1200 horsepower and 550 kilograms and the ability to do 0 to 100 in less than 2 seconds, the performance out of these unlimited super boats is hard to match. I'm Andre from the High Performance Academy and in this video I'm going to give you a quick insight into what makes a competition unlimited super boat tick. We'll start with the engine which is based on a Nissan VK56 5.6 litre V8. Obviously that's only the bare bones of what we've got behind us right now. The entire engine's been stripped and rebuilt for a very different task. It's still at 5.6 litres but it's now sporting a set of high compression forged pistons, much stronger conrods, a much stronger billet crankshaft and it's also dry sumped. Now the dry sumping is essential because these boats can pull over 6G in a corner so the dry sump is critical to make sure that that lubricating oil still reaches all of those critical parts with such high cornering forces. The other side effect of the dry sump system though is it allows the engine to be fitted much lower in the chassis and when we've only got 550 kilograms every ounce of that weight needs to be mounted as low and as centrally in the hull as possible. Now getting power out of this engine is down to the twin hull set turbochargers and it's only running a relatively modest boost pressure of around about 15 to 16 psi. It's also running on methanol fuel and there's a few reasons for this. Again it comes down primarily to weight. Running on methanol fuel because it's very cool in the way it burns allows the engine to be run with no intercoolers. So the hot charge air runs straight into the plenum chamber. You'll notice however there are a couple of injectors fitted into the turbo compressor outlet and these are used when the engine comes on boost and they inject a fine atomized mist of methanol fuel into the hot intake air. Now when this happens the latent heat of evaporation of methanol is very high and what this means in layman's terms is as it's injected in it absorbs heat out of the air as it goes through a phase change from liquid into vapour. So this actually cools down that hot intake air and this is why we don't need intercoolers. Now the rest of the fuel injection is handled by a set of Moran 235 pound per hour injectors. The factory intake plenum from the VK56 is long gone and the engine's now running a set of 8 individual throttle bodies and the Moran injectors are actually fitted above the throttle plates. Now at idle and cruise this can provide some problems as getting atomized fuel past the mostly closed throttle plates is obviously challenging. Of course this is only an issue when the boat started on the trailer and is idling up to the start line. Most of the run through the course is at full throttle or very close to it and mounting the injectors further away from the intake valves like this allows the fuel to have a better chance of vaporizing and this allows the engine to make more power. The fuel's being used better. Now, in order to tune this engine we're using a Motec M800 ECU and this is coupled to a Motec CDI8 CDI ignition system. Igniting methanol fuel particularly in a high compression engine when we're adding boost pressure is incredibly difficult so we need all of the spark energy that we can get. One of the key inputs that we're using to help us tune this engine is the individual cylinder exhaust gas temperature sensors. You can see these sensors fitted to the header tube for each cylinder and they measure the temperature of the exhaust gases coming out of each cylinder. This helps us to equalize the fuel delivery to each cylinder. This data is also used in conjunction with the Bosch wideband lambda sensor that's fitted to the outlet of each turbocharger. This lets us see what the air fuel ratio is and with the combination of the wideband sensor and the EGT sensors we can make sure that the engine is running perfectly. Now in order to get data from the engine we're using a Motec C125 dash logger. The C125 dash logger is actually doing two tasks. We're using it as a central logging point where we're taking all of the logging from the ECU as well as some additional sensors to do with the jet unit pressure in the inlet and the outlet of the jet unit. 
We're also using it as a driver display and a driver warning though. So if any of the sensors such as fuel pressure or oil pressure drop outside the realm of what we're happy with, this will bring on a warning that instantly brings the driver's attention to the dash so that he can see what exactly is wrong. This means that the driver can concentrate all of his energy and attention on simply driving the boat and if anything goes wrong his attention will quickly be focused back to the dash. If you're interested in learning more about EFI tuning and EFI technology, check out our free six part series of tuning lessons that will be delivered straight to your email inbox. Click the link for more information.